a lot of research has been done on this documentary, oh, yes, of yeah, course. Could so you, you tell us how extensive it was? Oh, he did most yeah. of the research. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, the research, um, uh, the research was quite extensive because it's a factual, um, it's a factual program, um, and because it's going in National Geographic, the, the the process was we had to make sure that our fact checking was accurate. Mm -hmm. um, basically, to give you an example, how serious, how stringent the the, the process is is. Every single line in the script has to be verified by uh, the team of Nat Geo researchers in Washington. Okay. So basically, whatever we wrote in the script, mm -hmm. you know, whatever happened, we'll send it to them. They go through line by line. Mm -hmm. Like, this is accurate. This is accurate. And we have to basically do annotation to verify uh, this. Okay, I have two sources that have said this, mm -hmm. so that therefore it's accurate. So mm -hmm. every single thing is true. So and that, yeah, factual. a lot of research. 100 How long factual. did it take for you to get the whole thing done, the script and the whole... Well, the whole entire process yeah. took about a year to complete from the okay. stage of our research to filming to editing and getting everything done. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's um, you research before, you do research during and you research after ah, sure. the filming. That's great. And the interesting thing is that you got local crew yes. completely 100%. Tell yep. us about that. Um, yeah. the <laughs> One thing, uh, because I film a lot, um, mm -hmm. most of my projects are overseas and for international channels and for like National Geographic, this is my third documentary with them. And one thing, I travel overseas and I shoot, f uh, shoot a documentary or story about somebody or something overseas and I've always mm -hmm. thought, why am I going overseas to do all these stories? You know, I've got, I can, f I can get these stories back home. And, and I need, I, I always felt like I needed to come up with a story where I can tell my story of my country. And, and also, one of the things we made sure was, as best as we can, wanted, we wanted to keep the whole team as Malaysian as we can. And mm -hmm. it's, like a, it's like a point to prove to other people uh, from wherever they come from that, you know, we can do it. We have the capabilities, we have the people. And yeah, we can do it. And I think we kind of, Proved it with the, the Silat documentary. I mean, there were throughout the whole the massive team that we have. We were, there was only like two key people uh, that were foreigners. Apart from that, everybody else, mm -hmm. everything local. So it had a very Malaysian feel to it. Yes, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. We were very proud of it. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, could you tell us some of your most memorable moments filming this? Um, <coughs> <my> <laughs> I think it's back to the same thing. Right? Uh, well. For me, uh, doing the whole process is more about work. I mean, I was yeah. just uh, concentrating on getting what I had to do. Mm -hmm. But for the most memorable part was when Joel had the last three bouts where he had to actually fight. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as a kid, uh, a as a kid and a teenager, I, I learned martial arts myself. And then I went into competitive martial arts, uh, uh, I mean, competitive sports. And, um, and even if you know, even when you know what you're doing, when you get into that ring, your heart pounds like nobody's. You know, you you're like anxious, you're scared, your 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 adrenaline's pumping, and that's when you know what you're doing. You know what you have to do when you get in the ring. I mean, then Joel comes along, who doesn't know competitive sila, mm -hmm. and he walks into the ring knowing what he learned in three days. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can imagine what he's going through, and and to actually see him go through that whole three three rounds, and even after getting hurt. I think there's one part in the documentary. He said, "That's it. That's it. I'll fight. I'll fight. I'll fight." Mm. I mean, just to see that, you know, it shows that even though he knows that he's getting, mm. you know, he's getting good um, bashing, bashing, <laughs> uh, but he 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 had his pride. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as as an American, uh, as a Navy officer, mm -hmm. he's got that pride that he has got to uphold, and then he's got his sealer pride that he's got to uphold. And regardless of whatever he, he was going through, whatever he was thinking, whatever injury that he was having. He just knew that he had to finish it, and he was limping. Mm -hmm. But he went through everything, and and I think he did quite a good job. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's really stressful, and and, and and there's all these Malaysians, you know, mm -hmm. all the Malaysians around, surrounded by all these Malaysians, and then okay. one half is saying, "Go, Joel." One half saying, "Beat the American," <laughs> you know. The, the, and then and then towards mm -hmm. the end of the third third bout, you could actually mm -hmm. hear the one saying, "Beat the American," suddenly go like, "Come on, Joel! Come on, mm -hmm. Joel!" They 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 actually s felt for him. Yeah. And there was this guy who just wanted to f do what he had to do and then just finish the whole process mm. and get it done and over with. And that was the most memorable part for me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? 
Um, let's see. For me personally, I mean, there were a lot of memorable moments, but I think one of the things I did, I guess, enjoy the most was uh, the fact that we were entering this world of silat gurus. You know, uh, mm -hmm. getting access into something. That I think I think martial arts and especially silat, you know, something that we've all naturally been curious about. I mean, we knew a little bit about it, but you know, we didn't know a whole lot. So for us, even getting into it, even though we did research prior to filming, yeah, we thought we knew a lot. But once we were inside this world, with hanging out with these gurus for two weeks, you know, you're just having conversations with them on the side. It's where you learn that there's just a whole lot more to it, you mm -hmm. know. And to me, just, I guess, the fact that they actually shared the information with us, you know, they're very open with it. And I thought that was quite, a, quite an experience for me. Another interesting thing about this documentary was the special effects that you used. Oh. Can you tell us a little bit more about the graphics and the... Ah, oh, great. Uh, yeah, um, the documentary features um, quite a bit of uh, CGI, mm -hmm. uh, computer graphics. And uh, I think the, the, the reason we did it was because, again, from the initial stages when we thought about doing a documentary on sea life, we said, okay, we've got to show how deadly this art is. Mm -hmm. Break down the... Mm. Yeah, break down mm -hmm. the moves, what happens to the body, but... You, you're not able to do that purely by filming because from the outside when you see someone hit someone mm -hmm. you say okay you know it looks like a tap or it looks like this but what actually happens within the body mm -hmm. why do sea light gurus hit specific points in the body mm -hmm. so that's where we came up with the idea of using uh, motion capture technology mm -hmm. so the first time ever these sea light guys were in these suits we had ping pong balls you know what they use and basically they basically um, did all their moves and all the techniques and we actually co collected the data and that and we teamed up with uh, University of Malaya. Um, the, the University of Malaya actually did, did the research on that and mm -hmm. basically verified what these gurus were saying all this while, you know. And uh, I think uh, another good part of the process was that the, um, <coughs> the guys that were working, the CGI guys, were completely local guys. Mm -hmm. They're this company called Young Jump. Mm -hmm. And a uh, bunch of great guys, you know, young, they're very enthusiastic and, you know, we were very proud of the CGI that came out with, you know, people who've seen it so far said, wow, you know, where do you guys do it? Mm -hmm. And we said, well, these guys in Trust, you know, they <laughs> did it 100% local. In Trust, <laughs> you know, they're like, really? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So and don't look down on Trust anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they were very, very impressed, you know, that, that, that Malaysians could come up with this quality, this level of computer graphics, you mm -hmm. know. So. Yeah, it was very interesting. Yeah. We got to see the movements and yes. uh, it was really nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Could you tell us a bit about the um, locations that you shot? There's some very interesting. Uh, we have to jungle kill scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, we film. <laughs> we film a little outside here okay. of Kuala Lumpur. You know. Okay. We basically film in Ulu Langat. Right oh, okay. Yeah. 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 We 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 did a quite an extensive recce of various areas that we thought would work. Mm -hmm. And we were thinking by in up in by the beach in Sarateng and mm -hmm. uh, in Ipoh, the birthplace of actually uh, Sila, Sila Gayong. Mm -hmm. But then we kind of like thought it would be easier to actually just put everybody in just one place. Right. So we actually stayed there mm -hmm. for about one and a half, uh, one and a half weeks or something like that. Mm -hmm. We just stayed there. So everybody, so, so we all became like a community, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. So as we worked and then at the end of the day, we chat and mm -hmm. you sleep and you wake up. So we all bonded together, even though we are crew. With other Pisilas, we bonded. So there's all these midnight chats Chat. and then tetare, <laughs> tetare and all that. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. that's, so what about the challenges that you had in filming this? What were some uh, of the major challenges? Well, First off, I think access was uh, yeah. one of the big mm. challenges. You know, I mean, initially that was the initially major. Mm. We we had to convince the Silat gurus first of all to want to tell their story, to share it with mm. the world, and uh, that was the first stage. And after that, because we involved different parties. Because Joel is a Navy officer, it wasn't as simple as to say, okay, hop on the next flight and come here. Mm -hmm. I know we had to literally had to, to, to request access from the Navy, from the US, to allow them to release him for the filming of this documentary to explain why. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And the next thing was, um, there were scenes in the documentary where he basically trains with the Malaysian police force. Mm -hmm. So getting access into the police yeah. force, mm -hmm. you know, that was also that. So I guess that was one of the challenges that we faced. You know, from the filming side? For, for me, it's just trying to get it the first time around mm -hmm. because, I mean, it's always best to get it the first time when it's done naturally. If, if I don't get it, if mm -hmm. I miss something, I say, can you do it again? Y you don't That's get it. The, the, the feeling is not there. Mm -hmm. And the challenge is 
because like I said, everything is not um, staged, so it's 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 real. So you, you just put him into a situation, and the challenge was to ch film around him and try to get the best of everything and not be in his way. Mm -hmm. That was also because he was doing all these moves and all that, and suddenly you're in his way. You know, you uh. I mean, I've had a few kicks. <laughs> you know, uh, in my in my legs. I mean, mm -hmm. during the uh, uh, the one in Pula Pol, mm -hmm. so they, they were actually having the the sparring fights, and I actually got too close, and I got a yes. few kicks. Yeah. And any future projects? You see yourself working together in any other future projects in the pipeline? Yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we work well together. Yeah. Um, we kind of understand each other's moods, temperaments. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Good points, bad points, as you said yeah. before, and I'm 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 seriously looking forward to to, to work with him or work yeah. with him for not for him with him <laughs> <laughs> in the very near future, yeah. and we've got a few things lined up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. On that note, I just want to congratulate you all again for that beautiful yeah. opportunity to produce a local sea yeah. documentary. And with that note, Fight Master Sea premieres on National Geographic Channel at at nine p.m on Merdeka Day, August 31st. Till then, I'm Lucinda Joseph. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was so much easier than what we <laughs>